Taranya. I uh, lead the product on the Microsoft site called the Azure Cosmos database. It's a NoSQL database. But today I'm here to talk about um, one of the companies that we acquired a couple of years ago. Um, it's a startup specifically called the Citus database, if you've heard of it. Um, and um, we continue to keep it open source and uh, most of our team is uh, supporting the Citus core engine. Uh, it is uh, platform agnostic, meaning you can run it in bare metal, you can run it in multiple clouds. Uh, just to kind of clarify the synergy of why Microsoft, like I, Microsoft or my team acquired Citus is uh, to also have the ability to provide uh, distributed Postgres as a hyperscale service, say as first party in Microsoft. But for today's session, we will be talking 100% about the, the technology piece of the thing, which is essentially how interesting it is to distribute PG SQL um, uh, using the Citus uh, engine. Yeah. Uh, with that, I wanted to kind of just start off with a quick uh, uh, overview for the, how many of you have heard of Citus here? Okay, not bad, quite a bit, thank you so much. Uh, essentially, I think, uh, I've uh, spoken or I've worked with uh, the co-founders and the founders of the Citus engine when it became, for example, part of uh, the Microsoft family, but uh, also very passionate group of founders who want to and who are committed to keep this open source and it will continue to be so. Uh, there were a couple of caveats of how uh, one, what problems Citus was trying to solve and also why, for example, choosing Postgres as the base to start a distributed sharded, like a distributed SQL engine for extremely real-time analytics and uh, fast query pushdowns and um, enabling at scale um, uh, scenarios, right? So firstly, wanted to kind of call out that um, uh, the Citus is more like an extension over PG. So essentially, we will see that anytime there's a new upgrade on PG, the next day, uh, Citus will be supporting the latest version of PG. So that's the promise that we provide on the uh, release pages. And this will be fully open source uh, and uh, provides you uh, multiple self-managed uh, environment setup for PG. Uh, also, just if you're curious, this uh, a logo that the Citus team came up with is uh, to kind of uh, say, hey, uh, uh, we'll start with Postgres the elephant out there, but we'll bring some magic into the elephant like a unicorn. So it's like trying to bring uh, 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 sharding uh, in terms of various kinds of uh, tables on it. Also wanted to kind of uh, call out uh, where we are and these links and all of them will be provided. Uh, we do have, for example, if I quickly try to take you to two links as we speak, and those are your landing links for this conversation. Today's uh, citusdata.com, and the other one is where the releases are uh, deployed. And we'll see the latest one is 11.2. And uh, uh, every few months, you, you'd say that it's a standard stream of releases, and we can see that there. And similarly, uh, the Citus data page on getting started, the main value prop of distribution and scale parallelized performance using Postgres as the base storage engine in terms of the way it's used, open source and fully managed database service that can be deployed uh, individually and simplified architectures. So I uh, just wanted to call out on that before we proceed. Setting context here, um, when we look at modern database platform, uh, like to think of it as uh, explosion, expansion on three pivots. One is uh, the data structure itself. We started off like decades ago as structured databases and from structured databases and uh, in the last 20, 10 to 20 years, NoSQL databases have come up big time. And then the NoSQL databases providing uh, geo distribution scale and shard, but then query performances are still the best when you say in relational data stores. So uh, how can I get more ACID uh, compliance in NoSQL base, uh, where we transition to what we call as new SQL data stores. 
Uh, but then if you look at SQL world of things, they've also improved. They are also supporting stores like JSONB and various other kinds of data structures, but also enabling query pushdowns and sharding, and that's what they call as DSQL or distributed SQL. So it's a merging of DSQL and new SQL world. And uh, that's where, for example, Citus engine is provided strong query language in terms of relational database of Postgres, but also being able to provide that kind of shard, right? So that's variety of data. The other thing is volume of data. Data is very cheap to store, and uh, the compute on the data is what is more expensive, but the data itself, GBs to TBs to, in fact, petabytes of data is something that Citus, we have one or two customers on Citus who are using that. Uh, so it's, it's really the volume of data that's expanding and the velocity at which they are working as well. So uh, starting from batch operations to transactional workloads to real-time analytic workloads, these, the, all of these need data to be um, uh, accessed in specific formats, right? So multiple questions that we asked when, uh, and on, by the way, I'm speaking on behalf of the CITES founding team, the ones who have been contributing to the source code, et cetera. Uh, I joined late personally into the bandwagon, so I'd like to be more like a messaging uh, folk to that. But then the, the key detail on which is uh, how can I um, uh, solve problems of scaling out of data, uh, performing various kinds of queries on data, could be transactional queries, could be real-time analytic queries, could be, uh, you know, batch queries. Essentially, systems have become what we call as HTAP systems hybrid transactional analytical processing systems and how can, uh, you know, today's workloads uh, bet on that and the data structure on how you're trying to store the data. While these are being said, now on which Citus has been built in terms of core benefits of PostgreSQL. Uh, so in terms of the, you know, the extensions has been something that uh, probably has been the singular most important thing why Postgres has been adopted so widely by the community, as opposed to forking and setting up your new data store, how can I build on and then build extensions on it is something that has been valuable. Data structures such as JSONB, as I said, has been pivotal in terms of uh, being able to query and also being able to distribute. So a geospatial data. So all of those are the tenets, rich indexing, of course, the query and query pushdown. These have been the search, index, extensions have been the pivotal of PG. While we look, for example, in terms of uh, scale out, in terms of global reach, security components, HA that has been built in, there is options to have high availability and replicas out. Uh, running queries and running queries that can be uh, more intelligent, integrated, etc. So those are certain things, right? So uh, the other thing is when we look at Citus extension uh, uh, for Postgres code benefits, we are looking at four main pieces. One is uh, scale out uh, horizontally, as we said, uh, simplified infrastructure where you can decide the number of nodes we want and then how the system sets up, performance, and then uh, like literally one day uh, in terms of catch up, in terms of the existing uh, PG version support as well. Uh, what are probably the key differentiators when it comes to Citus? So today on Citus, uh, you can start with uh, a single node, uh, for example, and in place without downtime, you can scale out to multiple nodes. So that's an interesting thing. And when we say as a single node, there are two, three interesting constructs. In fact, just two simple constructs on Citus. One is called the coordinator node. But today, at least, everything is piped through a coordinator, single point of failure if you have a single coordinator node, so to speak. But from the coordinator, which has the metadata store, you have uh, multiple worker nodes where you can decide how your data needs to be sharded, and then the worker nodes actually contain the data. So if you have a single node, then the coordinator and the worker, and all the shards essentially sit on a single node, and then you can have uh, scaled out to multiple nodes, what we call as uh, shard splits, and non-blocking shard splits, meaning the incoming queries can be allowed to, without blocking uh, any um, active workload from coming. And the backend shards can be, uh, worker nodes can be split out as well. So that's something that uh, in terms of online scaling. Uh, and the other thing is called online rebalancer. These are issues that uh, people see, uh, we see a lot, for example, in the NoSQL world that I am more familiar with, for example. Uh, where uh, uh, 
you know, just the laws of the physics and how your data has to be stored. A partitioning in a geo distributed space is completely given, so your data is sharded. Now, once your data is sharded and you shard based on a particular shard key, and the shard key could be a single property or a single value, could be a compound key, could be a nested key, could be a hierarchical partition key where you have one shard key and then multiple other shards as sub partitioning, so you have this option. All of those are things that you're probably familiar or it's there in other services in the, in the uh, today out there. But what is interesting is uh, this, uh, how in an active production workload can you avoid uh, a hot partitions or can you avoid shards, uh, some of them which are hot while others are very cold. And for example, you don't have a, for example, including Citus and in other databases as well. Actively, you don't have a hot and a cold tier in terms of storage or data. And for you to run a query saying run this as a hot query, run this as a slow query, which means the query can go to a more cheaper storage or the query has to go to an in-memory storage. Like in terms of the query pattern, that is not very common if you kind of think. The other option is uh, actively real-time assuming that I have all my data that I need, can I rebalance? Can I remove components from one shard, includes data movement and move it to another shard? So in Citus, the shard rebalancer distributes shards, um, the old and new shards, so the worker shards are balanced. And the best part of it is it gives you granular control as you as a DBA or a developer can actually say, uh, in fact, you can say I wanted to move from of this particular shard to another shard. One example of that is this tenant isolation. So for example, there are commands, like you can say isolate a tenant to a new shard and you provide the uh, table name and the tenant ID. In this case, a new tenant has come out uh, in shard four, and we want to say that, hey, I want to separate it into an entire new worker node, and then have this single tenant into that. So uh, the difference is, uh, and in fact, if I, uh, coming from my uh, NoSQL hat, if I look at that, there are systems uh, wherein uh, this happens automatically. While it happens automatically, could be an extremely cool engineering problem for us, say I talk from Microsoft for example, for us to solve, to say in a multi-tenanted system how we can do that, we actually see a lot of customers saying that, hey, we want, we know our workload the most, and so we want to be able to say which is that large tenant that needs to be isolated. So systems like Citus actually provides that granular control, and that's something that um, is um, uh, very much uh, valuable there. Uh, the other thing when I say key differentiator, it's like the next day availability of the open source PG version that's available, will be available on Citus uh, right there. Uh, so that's. So next we talk about the high level architecture of um, uh, how the Citus uh, extension works. So essentially a PG client would hit the coordinator node. The coordinator does not contain the actual uh, data. Uh, it contains uh, mostly metadata and uh, also uh, uh, there are something called uh, local tables that you can say it can reside only in the coordinator. So it contains fair amount, less amount of data, but mostly the routing patterns to say which worker nodes have which shard and so it can, uh, you know, route the request and aggregate the request part to create parallelization. So that's the a coordinator, and then uh, you have multiple worker nodes depending on, again, the user's choice to say, I want to have two, three. I can even do a four core machine and scale it to six, eight core in place, or I could um, uh, be able to, you know, fork it out and say, I want X number of worker nodes. So next, when we talk about the coordinator nodes, I said uh, it contains node with uh, metadata information typically used for routing. So in this case, in this sample, you kind of see that there are multiple uh, worker nodes, four of them here, and each of the worker nodes can have X number of shards, right? They could have uh, various number of shards. Now, the interesting question is, how is the shard decided? And in case of PG, for example, say a PG, uh, a database has some 50 tables. Now, all of these 50 tables uh, need not sit in all the shards, for example. Uh, so there is, uh, the way we define it, for example, I would uh, want to just go through a small uh, example here, like how do we uh, uh, take an example, for example, and having a sales uh, transaction here. So a local table, uh, when I say create a table, local table is created, which has 
or sales transaction ID, the customer ID, date and amount. Just an example that we are just sharing. Uh, and then uh, when we say create a distributed table and then I am giving it the customer ID as the shard key and then I am saying I want this as a sales transaction table. So create a shard on this customer ID. So uh, you will see that all customer IDs uh, 111 will be considered as one shard, customer IDs 112. So uh, all the sales transactions for one particular customer will be stored as a single shard. Now what is interesting is the three kinds of tables, I will come back to this but I want to just talk about this so we understand the architecture. There are three kinds of tables. This table that we saw here, this uh, trans the sales transaction is what we call as a distributed table. That means this table exists in every worker or the subset of workers. It, it is sharded table, that is a distributed table. And for the distributed table, you need to have a shard key on which it distributes. Typically, if you make a query based on that shard key, then your query will go only to those worker nodes which have that shard data. For example, if there are multiple tables, but all of those tables have that shard key as their primary key, then uh, then your query is the most efficient because it's just going to go to those shards, uh, uh, those shards in that particular a single worker node or maybe couple of worker nodes to get the data, and all the multiple tables which are sitting on the shard key for the respective key ranges will also be co-located with uh, with each other. So uh, th that is your uh, distributed table, reference table. Uh, is a table where you feel that I don't have an exact uh, uh, partition key or a primary key on which I can actually uh, map two or more tables. So I want the table to be there in every single worker node. So situations where I know that I need the table to be again like a copy of the whole table to be stored, I store it as a, a reference table and for it and the local table is typically the ones that stored in the coordinator node for a specific kind of uh, you know joins that you want to do. You have some sort of a uh, you know you have a product catalog and you say I have these five items that are always going to be there or you know I want to merge it for a particular campaign and the campaign will go. I can store it as a local table, merge it and once the campaign is I can drop that local table. Out. So, so that is um, uh, the high level there. And the other thing is how are queries routed? So that's what I was trying to just say it at a high level. When you write any query on um, on the Citus uh, engine essentially, so query is uh, typically what we say is we would say we want the query, uh, we want the query based on the shard key. The query will go to the coordinator or the node and then it will be routed for example in this particular case will be routed to that particular shard which has that data. Now if the uh, query has joins or query has multiple tables and uh, there are two scenarios that can happen. One scenario is the shard key is the same shard key in those multiple tables then actually the way the system is sharded is such that only those respective uh, co-located data ranges is actually showed which means you will have lesser number of uh, queries to be made on the worker node. Two is the option to use reference table or local table uh, so that is one. Three, otherwise the query will actually run to specific uh, worker nodes that have and that is kind of the more uh, worst case scenario or the situation where performance wise it is probably not uh, The couple of other use cases in terms of what we wanted to cover in this session, one was uh, uh, just highlighted four main use cases, real time data analytics. Mainly because we say real time analytics means that you want a better kind of uh, query, query which includes some smaller aggregations, query includes some real time data and stronger query push downs. So it helps uh, to have Postgres engine for that and we see site is better there. Uh, enabling HTAP where the same engine can be used both for OLTP and OLAP uh, workloads. Uh, IoT based telemetry systems uh, because of the real time nature and uh, um, lot of so situations which have lot of concurrent uh, needs tend to be better off in the site is because they parallelize workloads better and then uh, definitely huge huge customer base and uh, adoption I am seeing in um, the multi tenanted uh, SaaS workloads here. So when we look at uh, real time or uh, time series operational analytics in terms of reporting here is um, 
uh, so the um, diagram which is there which is put in a lot of uh, the customers that I have seen which includes a lot of Microsoft uh, based uh, workloads such as you'll see Databricks hosted on Azure Databricks. This could be any kind of web app service, could be any push notification service like KPNS, GPNS, in our case NPNS which is Microsoft push notification server, any eventing uh, systems, so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, essentially as you see there is the, there are two, three things that is interesting. Uh, the Citus engine enables what we call a spread out, shard out, etc. And hence we use the word hyperscale, but in the in the true sense uh, when I say hyperscale you probably want some cloud vendor to maintain that hyperscale for you. But there are people who actually take the open source Citus to be able to set their hyperscale clusters also. So that is very much possible. Uh, freshness of data, data uh, availability, uh, durability, concurrency, all of those are obviously the most important things. Um, Choosing the shard key is probably the most important decision uh, in uh, just as we do that in any NoSQL components in Citus as well. Uh, so uh, that's uh, important. Then uh, scaling uh, multi-tenanted uh, SaaS applications as we spoke about uh, and there are some interesting pitfalls. IoT as well, just go over that uh, purely IoT workloads and considerations. Uh, high transactional analytical workload considerations. Uh, so those are the big things that we want to talk. And just to close off today's session in the interest of time is uh, some of our large customers, have, for example, open source sites have about petabytes of data sitting through. Uh, there have been uh, situations where suddenly when we have huge number of workloads, uh, like concurrent users, 60,000 to 100,000 users, something that uh, uh, Citus scales. Uh, there is a Citus con which is coming up uh, this week actually, April 18th and 19th. I wanted to close today's session by saying that uh, these are, uh, this is purely based on our open source uh, Citus engine and our contributors who are founding that. Uh, pretty interesting uh, sessions available there. Uh, things around um, uh, efficiencies of shard rebalancers, other extensions on PG, high availability being baked in, so on and so forth. So with that, thank you. And if there are any questions, that would be great. Do we have questions for Shania? Hi, Shania. So the data model itself needs to be changed uh, from an existing uh, Postgres database to be uh, adopted into uh, hyperscale. Um, uh, actually, it's a very valid question. So, so I'm um, sorry. Uh, uh, do, do, do you see any uh, uh, intelligent solutions being built at Citus, uh, which helps in you know uh, bridging this gap? Uh, so long story short. Uh, I would say schema migration uh, uh, is not um, is not an expensive affair, or it's not something that is needed 100%. Uh, when we say moving from uh, relational to NoSQL, there is an entire data modeling exercise that's needed. Whereas existing PG to PG Citus, uh, there are two kinds of activities needed. One is based on what is the main query patterns and whether I have a right shard key on those query patterns. And two is how is my data exploding or expanding or how, how what is my elasticity needs. And so based on those two, there seems to be uh, some tweaks. But essentially, if you have, for example, 20 tables on Postgres, you have the same. You have, uh, so the overall, all extensions will be equally supported. Similar foreign key, primary keys can be uh, construed. So uh, I would say that is, uh, that's there. It's not a problem. But we don't have a ready-made tool if that's your answer. We have to work on building something. Um, the shard rebalancing, is that part of Citus or is that part of the cloud service? It's part of Citus. It provides. Part of Citus, okay. The latest 11.2 provides uh, shard rebalancing. Yeah. Hi, uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, uh, is 
just now it says uh, it has parallel processing. So does it mean that uh, if I run a query across multiple shards, so it will do a MPP on all the shards? Yes, it will parallelize your, uh, so if you do your query on multiple shards, it will spin off separate threads and it will run the threads on each of the shards. It will reply, uh, the, it will have the coordinator will aggregate back in response. The upcoming version on uh, Citus is going to parallelize the coordinator. That is not yet available, but that's coming up. Uh, sorry, we are really out of time. We need to have our next speaker. Thank you so Can much, we? but I'm, I'm going to be there here.